how's it going? I thought I'd talk through a bunch of the lenses that I'm very much uh, enjoying using with the Panasonic GH5. Um, now obviously I've not had the GH5 a long time but I had the GH4 for since its release, that's what I'm filming this on now. Um, and I've also got Canons and Sonys and other cameras. Uh, so I've got a real sort of mixture of lenses and a real sort of mixture, mixture of cameras. Um, so with the uh, my lenses, I've got quite a bunch of EF, Canon EF lenses. Um, what I use with that is the Metapones XL booster. Um, so that gives you bags and bags of extra light and it really uses, you know, it, it optimizes the lens for that camera, it, it's almost full frame, it's almost full frame in terms of, um, you know, using the whole of the image circle, throwing off the back of the lens. Uh, it's an expensive bit of kit, but if you've got full frame lenses, you do want a speed booster. You just do, simple as that. So let's start with the big guns. Uh, Canon 70 to 200, uh, 2.8, this is the Mark II, uh, latest version as of um, filming. Uh, it's probably the lens that I use the most. Um, it's the lens that I enjoy using the most. Um, it's a big, heavy unit, uh, but it gives you plenty of reach. 200 is great for kind of, um, you know, really getting in close on people when they're, they've got a bit of distance to you. And, you know, you can, you can lock yourself down in one position and get loads of different shots without moving the camera because you really can just pick and choose and, and form your compositions from all the way around you. Uh, so it's great for that. It's obviously a fast lens at full frame uh, 2.8. Uh, it's got great image stabilization. If you're filming a lot of action, like I do, and I often film in bad, bad conditions, like high wind and all that kind of thing, I know everyone says, don't put the IS on the tripod. With my kind of filming, I have to film with uh, image stabilization on nearly all the time, because if I'm filming at the beach on top of a cliff and I've got 20 mile an hour winds hitting me, I need image stabilization. Believe me, I've done the tests and I know I do need it. Um, and this has got great image stabilization. I know the GH5 has got um, good IBIS, it's got stabilization in the camera, but with certain lenses, uh, you need to rely on the lens stabilization. And this is one of them because it's quite long. So 200 millimeters gives you plenty of reach. You've also got the, the crop of, even though you're using a speed booster, you've got a bit of a crop on the regular 4K. But then you've also got the XC sensor, uh, the teleconverter sensor crop 4K within the GH5 as well, which is a great option, which gives you extra reach again. And then if I still can't, you know, focus on the surfer, I can't compose around, you know, if I haven't got enough reach, basically, then I'll also pop this on, which is the Canon uh, two times extended time Mark III, the third version. Uh, it does soften up the image again, but that turns this lens into a 400 millimeter lens. And then that and that with that, with the XE teleconverter at 4K, it's, I haven't done the exact mass, but it's giving you something like about 600 millimeter uh, lens um, using the sensor crop and the speed booster and this and that at 400 millimeters. So it's giving you bags and bags of reach. Now it does become a little bit big and unwieldy and any slight shake at 600 millimeters is noticeable. So, you know, you do have to bear that in mind if, you know, maybe just move your tripod closer if you can. But if you really need the reach, then that and that and that and that gives you tons and tons of reach. So that's that lens, love it to death. Sharp as tack and like I say, probably my most used lens. Uh, so the next most used lens, I would say, is probably the old, old, old Canon 2425. Now this lens is, it's the workhorse, it's the kind of, it's the Nissan Micro, it's the, it's the Ford Focus. Um, it, it's not sexy, it's not super sharp, it's not particularly fast, uh, but it's got decent quality, decent image quality. Uh, and it's got pretty good image stabilization and the field of view is just so freaking useful. From 24 to 105, that covers 90% of all of the shots that you're ever gonna need to get for probably about 90% of any filmmakers or photographers. Um, so if, if I was only gonna take one lens to something, it probably would be this, especially if I was sort of running and gunning and I didn't know what I was gonna be filming. Really, really useful lens. Like I say, it's not the sharpest lens in the world, but it's not soft either. It's fine, plenty sharp enough for 4K work. And even at f4, it, even though it's not good in low light, you can still blur out the background. f4, 105 millimeters, will still blur the background out, no problem. So you can still get shallow depth of field shots with this lens. Uh, and it's very pleasant to use. Like the focus ring works just how you want it to in terms of the throw and the reach uh, and the zoom ring. It's, it's just a really, really, decent, handy uh, kitchen sink, but you still get good results out of it lens. So yeah, this is the old version. There's a new version that's got slightly less vignetting and has 
um, better image stabilization, I believe, is the main two differences. I don't think the new one's any sharper. So you could probably save yourself a few hundred pounds and buy the older one. And, you know, I don't, from my experience, I would say it's, the old one's fine. So buy the old one, it's still still brilliant. Um, then when it comes to low light, now, as we all know, the GH5 is not a low light camera. I'll use one of my Sony's uh, if I'm gonna be filming in proper low light, but if I'm not sure about what the light's gonna be like and I want a low light lens option for my GH5, I'll definitely bring this out of the bag and this is the Sigma Art 50mm f1.4. Um, now, in an ideal scenario, every one of your lenses is a low light lens, but in practicality, it probably isn't. So you need to pick at least one lens, which is gonna be really good in, in bad light. Uh, and this is it for me. Um, and I chose 50 millimeters. It, it generally kind of covers most situations in terms of, you know, you can get your portraits, blur out the backgrounds, you can do your little close-up product shots if you need to. You can pretty much do landscapes, you know, if you've got a fair bit of distance and, and height away from, you know, the town or the coast or whatever it is you're filming, uh, you can pretty much do landscape with a 50 millimeter. It's not that bad. You know, it's a bit tighter than what, ideally what you want for landscape. But I certainly use it for that and I have no complaints and it's incredibly sharp, incredibly high contrast. You're never going to have any complaints about the image quality from this lens. It's just really, really high up on, out of all the lenses you could possibly buy. This is a really, really high quality lens. So yeah, I love it. I love using it and the focus feels nice and it's just generally a joy, joy to use. Um, no IBIS, uh, oh, sorry, no image stabilization in the lens, but obviously with the the wonderful uh, IBIS and the GH5, you could quite happily run and gun with that and this in terms of on your shoulder or something like that and you'd, you'd get fairly steady steady footage. Um, so next on my list of uh, lenses, this is the Samyang 14mm 2.8. Now, it's I think out of all my lenses, if I was going to upgrade it, probably would be this one, uh, but the problem is the upgrade is you know, three times as much money as this. This isn't a very expensive lens. Um, and it's it's okay, you know, it's not terrible, but I, per, from my personal experience, I find I have to stop it down to at least f5.6 or possibly f8 to get really good results. Now, it's not, you know, it's a very wide lens, 14 millimeter on full frame, you know, that is a very wide lens. So it's not like, it's not likely you're gonna need a shallow depth of field because you can't really get it anyway. So you're probably gonna be sh shutting down your aperture for this kind of lens shooting outdoors in daylight anyway. Um, so, you know, it, for my purposes, kind of landscape, when I really want a w really wide shot outdoors in the daytime, it's perfect. Put it in F8 and it's perfectly, perfectly sharp. Um, now, a lot of people recommend this as an astrophotography lens. Uh, I wouldn't because at F2.8, the, the faster aperture is, it starts to get really quite smeary. Um, but the main benefit is that it's very wide and there's minimal distortion. So the buildings, you know, whatever it is you're filming, you don't get that horrible fisheye kind of effect. Everything looks as it should in terms of straight lines and horizon remains straight, that kind of thing. So it's great for landscape when you need really wide lens um, and you want minimal distortion. That is what that, that is for, basically. Um, so coming on to uh, native lenses, this is the, uh, the Noxicron 42.5 millimeter uh, f1.2, which is a great lens. Is about I think it's the most expensive lens you can buy for um, for a GH5 that's that's native. Well, now there might be a couple more, but it, it's right up there with one of the best ones that you can get. It's very sharp. F1.2 uh, on micro four thirds is obviously pretty damn fast. This equates to in terms of Im image quality and depth of field, it equates to 85 millimeter f2.4 on full frame. So that's plenty, uh, you know, fast enough or or shallow enough to get, you know, to blur out the backgrounds on portraits. Um, it has fly by wire focus, which I'd say is probably the, my only negative thing I can say about this. I can't say anything negative about the image quality or the build quality, um, but I don't like fly by wire focus. Um, I, I prefer manual. Uh, if you're kind of the sort of guy that just sets focus and leaves it, that's not going to bother you. But if you're the sort of guy that does pull focuses and that kind of thing, it's a bit tricky to get good pull focuses on a fly by wire focus um, lens, in my opinion. But you know, your your mileage may vary. But that's about the only downside. Uh, and I use the GH5 mostly for video, but when I use it for stills, 
this is the lens. This is the lens you want for portrait for stills. Remember the autofocus on the GH5 is actually pretty good for stills. It really is quite good. It's not brilliant for video, you know, it's probably average for video, but for stills the autofocus is great and that's when you want a native lens for your autofocus for your um your stills. You know, you can snap away, get pin sharp, you know, focus on the eye, get pin sharp, shallow up the field, blur out the background, perfect portrait lens for the GH5. There's that one. And my last lens is probably uh, my second last lens. I've also got the lens on the GH4. Uh, but the last lens here is the Samyang 7.5mm fisheye. Now, don't get me wrong, this is going to make every shot coming out of your GH5 look like it was filmed on a GoPro. It really looks like a GoPro shot. So, don't expect any sexy shots out of this lens at all. But it's very small. It's very handy, it's very wide, so if you're, if you're filming with your back against the wall and you need a bit of extra width and you just want a slightly wider option, this is a really handy little thing to use. I very rarely use it, but it's just nice to have and it doesn't cost very much. So, you know, it's not in a small, so you can throw it in the bottom of your camera bag and it's just, it's just a handy thing to have. It's like your just-in-case option, really. Like I say, it does have fisheye coming out of its wazoo. It really is very uh, a bendy you know, warpy kind of lens. It's a fisheye at the end of the day. Um, so yeah, it's not fantastic, but it's handy. So I, I won't be selling it. I'll be, I'll be keeping hold of it just in case. Uh, and the last lens to talk about is what's on my GH4 right now, which is the Olympus um, 12mm f2. Uh, it's a great all-round lens. If you pair it with the, the Noctichrome, it kind of covers m vast majority of, you know, things you need prime lenses for. Uh, it's pretty sharp, it's pretty fast, um, it has no problems with the autofocus, it's generally uh, a good lens. It has a weird mechanism where it has fly-by-wire and then you slide the, um, the collar down and then it has manual focus, but the manual focus is a bit clunky, like it works, but you can't really do poor focuses with it or anything like that, so don't expect the manual focus to work like a proper manual focus. It's got it, but it doesn't quite work correctly. It kind of does a da -da 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 -da, does a weird steppy thing. Um, but it's handy for those of you that you know are just going to be popping your GH5, maybe on a uh, stabilizer or something like that. It's probably the perfect lens for that scenario in terms of field of view, nice and wide, but not distorted. It's a light little lens, so it's not going to mess up the balance on your stabilizer. Um, or indeed just your, your, you know, any kind of gimbal, what have you, or even if you're putting GH5 on a drone, probably the perfect sort of um, field of view and quality for that kind of scenario, and because and, it's small and light, obviously, but also 12 millimeters, you know, it's equating to 24 on a full frame. It's a really good, usable, wide angle, basically, which doesn't feel too wide or too narrow. Great for landscapes. I generally use it for landscapes. Um, and uh, you know some photography when I use my GH5 for photography I prefer to have a native lens on for that uh, and time lapses and, and that kind of thing it's a perfect lens for that kind of thing um, so there you go I do have um, a bunch of other lenses a bunch of other random lenses and I've also bought a lot of uh, lenses for my GH4 and then sold them on again because I didn't get on with them or I didn't like them including the kit lens and some of the other Lumix lenses and some of the other uh, Samyang lenses that I've, I've bought bought and sold quite a lot. Um, I'm not necessarily saying that these are the best lenses ever, but I don't think I need much more. The only thing I would like to add to my arsenal is a really fast wide, like the, the Sigma 20mm uh, f1.4. I think that would, uh, you know, that would really boost my nighttime um, filming, like, quite a lot. 50mm um, is great, uh, and it's not like the 2.8 on that is particularly... Um, uh, you know, it's not like it's a slow lens, but you know, I just would like one more uber fast lens um, to pop onto the uh, the speed booster for nighttime stuff. Um, but there you go. If I didn't mention anything, because this was just a bit of a one take wonder, where I just press record on the camera and then talked about stuff, so it's a good chance I forgot something or said something slightly wrong. Um, if you have any questions about any of these lenses or why I use some lenses over others or something like that or, or possibly about some of the lenses that I've bought and sold because there's a whole big list of those, um, pop questions down into the, the comments below and I generally try to answer you know, 95% of my comments and questions so uh, feel free to do that. And apart from that I hope this video was useful. Um, let's have a look at some shots. First of all, uh, I just there's a 
uh, from one position I used every single lens just so you can compare them side by side in terms of field of view and stuff. It was a grey overcast day so it wasn't a fantastic day for uh, doing any kind of filming so they're not pretty shots. Um, but if you watch to the end I'll put a sort of bunch of extra shots that are slightly more you know sexy shots that I used with each one of these lenses um, as well. So anyway guys I hope that was useful and I shall catch you next time. Peace out.